should be concerned. We should be concerned about, we're not going to talk about the specifics of what they can or cannot do, but we've seen a trend. They are constantly uh, uh, breaching all of the international norms and requirements, the resolutions incumbent upon them, whether it's to do with ballistic missile testing, weapons of mass destruction or others. So uh, they are escalating the situation and it is a threat to the United States and our partners and our allies. Uh North Korea? You aren't scared enough. Jeffrey, uh, chilling to say the least, but what does today's news tell us about North Korea's capability? Well, I think the reality is we often imagine North Korea like it was in the 1990s when it was backwards and it was aspiring to have nuclear weapons. And we're now in a period where North Korea has those weapons and they're producing them. So it's not surprising that we get little bits of new information here or there that cause our estimates to go up. But I mean, the big change really is this has gone from a country that wanted them to a country that has them. All right, so analysts are talking about this July 4th missile test, and say they, they say it demonstrated the North's ability to strike the U.S. West Coast. You said recently it could possibly hit New York. How do you arrive at that? Well, so what happens is the North Koreans fire their missiles almost nearly straight up, and they do that so they don't fly over Japan. Uh, what happens then is we sort of try to imagine how far that missile would have flown if they had straightened it out. And when you do that, you get kind of 7,000 kilometers, and that's enough to hit Alaska. But we uh, start modeling the missile. So we figure out how big it is, how much it weighs, how powerful the engine it is. And when you run computer simulations on what the missile could do if it was fired to its full range, uh, it looks a lot more like it could hit L.A. or perhaps New York than just Alaska. So are the North's ICBMs, are they capable of delivering nuclear-armed weapons? Oh, yes, yes. You know, the thing about nuclear weapons is they're smaller than conventional explosives. And so uh, if a missile can carry a payload of, say, a few hundred kilograms, less than a, a, a thousand pounds, uh, then it's going to have no trouble delivering a nuclear weapon. So right now, you think North Korea is capable of delivering a nuclear weapon and hitting virtually anywhere in the United States? Uh, you know, all the parts I like, sure. L.A. and, you know, probably New York. Wow. All right, we have several outlets who reported the U.S. had a clear shot at killing Kim Jong-un for about an hour before that July 4th missile test. What do you know about this, and why would they not have taken that shot? Yeah, I think the reality is a little bit more complicated. My understanding is they got a, got a picture probably from, uh, probably from a satellite showing that the missile had been erected uh, a little more than an hour before launch. The thing is... That's not the same thing as continuously monitoring it or having in place the ability to do something. And you also don't necessarily know that Kim Jong-un is there or where he is. So, you know, on the one hand, I think the U.S. intelligence community should be applauded for how good they are at monitoring North Korea's missile program. It's a big leap to go from that to actually having an exquisite ability to kill uh, a foreign leader. North Korea sent a clear signal to the world on where it stands in terms of weapons development by test firing what many experts acknowledge as an intercontinental ballistic missile this month. Kim Hye Sung delves deeper into the type of missiles the regime has in its arsenal and how it developed the relevant technologies. North Korea has long shown off its latest missiles at military parades. And in the last 18 months alone, it has tested close to 40 ballistic missiles. But on July 4th, Pyongyang made a game-changing revelation claiming that it had successfully tested an intercontinental ballistic missile. The Hwasong-14 flew 930 kilometers for around 40 minutes, reaching a maximum altitude of nearly 2,800 kilometers before splashing down into the East Sea off the Korean peninsula to avoid hitting Japan. 
Analysts say if it flew on a standard trajectory launched at a lower angle, the Hwasong-14 could fly further than 5,500 kilometers. Well, I think it's pretty clear um, that it is an ICBM. Uh, an ICBM is, is typically defined as anything longer than 5,500 kilometers. And this appears to have a, a, at least a 6,500 kilometer range. It can certainly reach all of, of, uh, of Alaska. Uh, it may be able to reach the main islands of Hawaii. An ICBM is a long-range missile designed to carry a nuclear warhead as its payload. During the Second World War, planes were used to drop atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, but ICBMs are much harder to detect and shoot down and are considered the most effective nuclear weapon delivery system today. How far the missile can travel depends on payload and speed. The lighter the payload, the further it can travel. The North now has the range to pass the first booster stage. Given a standard of 600 kilograms, it can hit over 8,000 kilometers. After failing in previous tests, it looks like now they have developed a powerful engine, possibly from its Bektusan engine. The speed of its engine development is surprising. With Hwasong-14, North Korea now joins the small club of nations with ICBMs, including superpowers like the U.S., Russia and China. So how is North Korea, one of the most reclusive states in the world with a GDP per capita of just 700 U.S. dollars, according to U.N. estimates, managed to make such rapid gains in its missile program and develop an ICBM? Experts believe North Korea originally reverse-engineered its missiles using Scud B missiles from the former Soviet Union via Egypt in the late 1970s. In the 1980s, North Korea exported short-range missiles to Iran and Pakistan, getting finance and information on uranium enrichment in exchange. Also, after 1990s, they got some aid from the Russian engineers due to the collapse of Soviet Union. And we all know that they imported several, lots of uh, uh, missile materials from China at the time. And after 2000, their missile development program became stable and they could speed up toward ICBM technologies. Given that it's a communist social state unlike other countries that would need billions of U.S. dollars, North Korea can develop an ICBM with its cheap human labor cost. The Hwasong-14 is not a lone flight test. Since 1998, the North has tested hundreds of missiles repeatedly, with the frequency soaring since the start of Kim Jong-un's rule in 2011. In science, there's no such thing as a failure. All these tests are an accumulation of data to learn from mistakes, modify technology and get better. The North Koreans are not stupid. They've been working on this for decades. From testing scuds like the KN-02 in the 1980s to the first test of its mid-range Lodong missile in the 1990s to long-range Tepodong-2 missiles in 2009 and in 2017, an ICBM. North Korea reportedly has thousands of missiles that could hit South Korea or Japan, but after adding the Hwasong-14 to its arsenal, it may now have the ability to hit the U.S. Hwasong-14 now has the engine and range to pass the first booster stage, but given that it's just around 17 meters long, it's relatively short for an ICBM. Shrinking the size of its nuclear warheads, as well as surviving in the final re-entry phase, where the warhead has to withstand the frictional heat generated from re-entering the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, will be key. And the question now is, can they make that small enough, light enough, and, and rugged enough to be carried by ballistic missile? From the regime's legitimacy, a strategic card to negotiate with the U.S. and self-defense against attack, North Korea has made becoming a nuclear-armed state its number one priority. After having tested a nuclear bomb in 2006, North Korea has made another milestone in this missile development program that could possibly change the equation of how the world addresses the North Korean threat. This bird is seriously dangerous but beautiful. Thank you for watching Right Wing. Your support really does mean the world to me. I hope you have an amazing rest of the day, and I will see you tomorrow.